in your beer and grab him a coat. We bout to sit for an hour bullshit and tell jokes. And please don't mix it up, cause he done sobered up. Brandon and T comedy on your social media feeds. And Brandon Tad said, bitch, your ex drank your buddy. Brandon Tad said, bitch, your ex drank your buddy. Brandon Tad said, bitch, your ex drank your buddy. What's up, everybody? Welcome into another, we're on camera now, another edition of Brennan Tassif is your ex drinking buddy. I'm your host, Brennan Tassif. We are doing a bonus, introducing my guest, one of my very good friends. You know him, you love him, Matt Fulcheron, the full charge. Hey, everybody. <laughs> good to be back. What's up, brother? In ex drinking buddy territory. <laughs> this side of noon. This, Unbelievable. This is a lot of fun. We, um, I wanted to do video because everyone keeps telling me I need to do video. And I thought, well, I want to have full charge on, do a little bonus, and we'll do the video. It's amazing. So now we're on. How much people will listen to other people talk. <laughs> and then they're like, you know what, though? This isn't good enough. It's <laughs> I need to see these fuckers. I was talking to Savannah at the house. I go, yeah, I'm doing video today. And she goes, why? <laughs> I was like, I don't because that's what people because tell that's me. what people want. People, people just want shit. Yeah, and people demand shit, and it doesn't always make sense. It makes no sense to me because when I I cannot if if the person is famous, sure, I want to see Billy Corgan yeah. on the Joe Rogan podcast. I want to fucking see it. Yeah, but for me, when I listen to a podcast, I uh, I want I'm cleaning my house. Yep. Or I'm driving, or whatever. I don't understand this sitting down and watching people. They watch it like it's an episode of TV. <laughs> but anyways, videos available, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Plug everything before we go too far. I know you're oh, you got yeah, some tour dates yeah. coming up. I'm gonna be in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, August sixth and seventh. That's the birthday show. And I'm on tour with Tom Segura from Pennsylvania to the Hamptons. August 24th through 28th. Oh, yeah. You guys have that Hampton show? Yeah. That, like six o'clock show? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was <laughs> lovely. Still time to catch dinner. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, five, I think there's a five o'clock and an eight o'clock, <laughs> which I'm not a huge fan of five o'clock shows, but I'm sure it'll be great. Those Tom Segura shows are yeah. pretty amazing. Absolutely. You just came off the road with him not too long ago. We did um, Baltimore, Cleveland. In Indianapolis. That's awesome. Which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Which those places don't sound that close, but we Did you guys fly or we flew do the bus? No, we 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 were we did it by bus uh for most of it. Did you? Yeah. What is that what is what goes into that process? Because we're used to doing like, okay, you've got a run, a weekend here. So you fly in, you get the hotel, you settle in. Right. What is that like? Like literally you get out, do you get done with the show and then just jump on the bus? And Well, it's, um, these questions are really tough. You can tell by the way I'm sweating. Uh, ah. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that at this it's time. 98 Brennan. degrees outside. Uh, uh, it's, it's, everything's taken care of by a tour manager. Yeah. And so you have to look at the schedule to see like, so every day is different. Okay. So you're constantly in and out of a bus, in and out of a hotel, in and out of a venue. And, but it's a piece of cake because there's someone taking care of everything. Yeah. Including food and, and what have you. That's gotta be so, so stressful. Stressful? Uh, for the, no, I'm saying for the tour manager. For them, yeah. yeah. Comics aren't always known to be punctual. That's, listen, this is why I still get to work. <laughs> Is because they I'm there early, and if they forget to send me uh, the schedule, I call them and tell them like I know, yeah, I know what's supposed to happen, and I don't make it difficult on anybody except for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we've talked about that before, uh, and I've talked about that with different guests about how some comics like you, like me. Where it's like, no, this is what time I said I'd be there. Right. So this is what time I'm going to be there. And then I've had other people on, and you and I have talked about this, but like, I'm like, hey, we're going to record at one. And they'll text me at 1.15 and be like, yeah. where's it at again? Yeah. And I'm like, you haven't left your apartment? No, some people think they're so good at what they do that they can be late. <laughs> that but, doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the whole job. The whole job is to show up early. I almost said on time. 
But there's a scene in that Louis show, Louis FX show, yeah. where he's opening for Seinfeld in the Hamptons. Yeah. And um, he gets through, you know, he shows up right when the show starts. And Jerry's like, you're late. And Louis goes, I'm here on time. And Jerry just looks at him like, nah. you know that's late, motherfucker. <laughs> you know on time is late. Absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is just like, doing your time like yeah. the exact amount of time you're supposed to do and that's it it's all it funny is. is a bonus i i mean <laughs> that not not to the paying customer no. but to the people running the venue well because that's what you and i have talked about that um where it's not a you're getting paid not for the material not for the content none of that you're getting paid to fill the time right the next booking is about whether you were funny or not yeah so it's like, yeah, you have you have a job to do, and they're just running a restaurant. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> they're the close, and so they need to know how long you're going to be up there. And if you get off early, you fucked them. Yeah. And if there's two shows and you go long, you fucked them. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too. It's funny you say it's it's just a restaurant because that's what it is. Because how many times? Have people been like, oh, and I've seen this at the stand all the time because they don't. They're one of the only clubs in New York that doesn't have a minimum. You can just uh -huh. show up and hang out, right? And that's why so many, especially like bar show comics like me or open micers, will gravitate towards there because mm -hmm. you don't have to spend money. Mm -hmm. And people will be like, well, I bought a ticket to right. the show, and it's like, yeah, that's not <laughs> the club. Almost makes no money off that. You have right. to buy stuff. Yeah. It's all they care. They they care. I, and I've run into this and we've talked about it before, but like the comedy zone and Jack's with the former owner, it was just like, oh, we just want like we don't we'll paper the whole room. We just want people to buy food mm -hmm. and drinks yeah. like and if the comic whoever's on stage is an afterthought. It's yeah. like we spend money, which is right. bananas to me because it's like, oh, no, it's about the comedy. That's, it's like that's yeah. how they feel about it. That's yeah. how the people that run the venue that's feel true. about it. The audience sure as fuck is interested <laughs> And is whether the comedian's funny or not, especially after about six, seven minutes. Yeah. You get, what is it? You get five minutes. You get five minutes of grace. And then that's after that, a lot, actually. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to call it three. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That, you really, you get one minute and then you're suspect. I, <laughs> that happened to me. Then people are like thinking too much to even laugh. Like, yeah. Oh, Oy. what are we in for tonight? <laughs> my, my second show in New York. I invited my cousin and God bless her. She came out, brought a ton of people, basically sold out the room just with her and her friends. Yeah. And I, first of all, I was like, she goes, oh, I only brought like 20 of my closest friends. I didn't want to overwhelm you. And I go, I don't even know 20 people. <laughs> yeah. Like acquaintances. Like, right. I don't know who I would call. And I was like, well, thank you so much. And, you know, they're attractive, you know, 20 sure. something right. white women. And so I get on stage and immediately I open with like getting arrested and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so I get up there. And it's like, ah, oh, because she's like, this is my cousin. Like, everyone cheer as loud as you can. Yeah. Like, we came to see him. Right. So I go up and it's this huge pop. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah. And then after about 45 seconds, I'm talking about getting arrested and being in jail. And they just kind of, mm -hmm. they just started staring at me. And I was right. like, oh, they're not, they're not connecting with any of this. Yeah. And after about two minutes, I was like, and then that pop from like, it's my cousin. You better cheer for him. Yeah. That's gone. Right. And now I'm just like giving a TED talk on right. like how not to get arrested. Right. To a bunch of 25 year old women. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is <laughs> who good. are actually going to need the TED talk. <laughs> they just don't know it yet. Yeah. Because this is only the beginning of their night. Oh, And yeah. they're going to get hammered. And then after, and after, you know, the usual, oh my God, you were so funny. But in the moment I was like, oh. They bought tickets. They all came out specifically to see me because my cousin was like, hey, yeah. like, let's go see Brennan. And that bought me about 45 seconds to a minute. That's yeah, all that bought. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate, absolutely hate when people come to see me. And right now I'm a newly married person, which means I'm doing all these social things yeah. and hanging out at parties with my wife's friends and stuff. And they're always like, oh, you know, that's all. They want to talk to comedy. Yeah. And then they want to be, well, come see you. And I'm always like, yeah, we'll hook it up. And in my head, I'm like, I ain't telling you shit. Don't. You are going to have to find it on my fucking website <laughs> if I manage to put it up there. Because it's, it's, the wor it's the worst for me. I fucking hate it. I don't know if I told you uh, my wife's um, aunt and uncle came into town I think it was 2018. To New York? Yeah. And I was working at Caroline's. 
I was opening up for a friend of mine, Felipe Esparza. Love Felipe. And I was just doing like these 15 minute spots every night. But I find Caroline's a little difficult. I usually do well there, but it's it's a lot of work, and I've done poorly there before. And um, and you know that's a big room. She's too. insisting on this aunt and uncle coming to see me, and I I break down after a while. I go all right, but just you know, just sit in the back. Don't sit in the 